Twitter at Capital OTB. We'll see you there. What would another shop right mean for you? It means more chef repaired meals to take home and call my own. Another place to get help with healthy eating. And another place to get fresh fish. Another shop right in the Capital District, 709 Central Avenue. Another shop right. That means more chef prepared meals, another dietitian, and more fresh produce. Get more choices and even more savings with ShopRite's growing family. We're all about food. We're all about savings. We're all about you. Welcome back to Capital OTB's The Inside Track. I am Jean Wood, and we are now joined by this morning's next special guest. Welcome, trainer Kathy Riffo. Good morning, Kathy, and welcome to the program. Good morning. Good morning. It's, it's nice to have you here. Of course, you are uh, ready and waiting for the Woodward Stakes this weekend, ready to send out Mucho Macho Man. Tell us a little bit about how he's coming up to the race. Um, he's training really well coming into the race, um, just feeling good and um, giving us all the right signals. That yeah. certainly, he's certainly developed into a tremendous looking four year old, and we're going to take a look back at one of his recent performances. Yeah, we're going to take a look back at the Suburban, which was on July 7th. Uh, take us back through this race. He fit, he's run four starts this year. He's got three firsts and a third place, and I think it's safe to say this was a career best effort back on July 7th. Me? Yep. Go ahead. Um, he just he broke great, and um, I, was, I was a little surprised how quick he actually was coming out of the gate. And um, I knew Trekmeister was going to try to take the lead. Talk a little bit about, as we watch them go up the backstretch here, a, a long race at Belmont Park. Uh, Mucho Macho Man, number six in this race. Currently rating just off the lead of Trickmeister, who's entered back in the Woodward again tomorrow. Yeah. All right, yes, tomorrow. Yes. Um, you know what? Right here when I was watching, uh -huh. his stride was just so nice and even and easy. And it looked like Mike had a lot of horse. And um, <laughs> I was just, you know, hoping he continued with that long, easy running. And he's a, you know, he's a big, long striding type of horse. One would assume that, uh, you know, a Belmont Park type of setup with a nice wide sweeping turn would suit him. How has he handled Saratoga, which is a little bit smaller racetrack, although still bigger than most American racetracks? Very well, very well. He likes it here. He likes the track surface, and um, he's been training super here. It's it's hard to it's hard to fault him on this track. Tell us a little bit about what you're feeling here. He's about to power away from this field impressively. He earned a buyer figure of 108, I believe, in this race, which was a yes. career best. He really uh, just just pulls away in a super time. Yeah, when we when he got to this point, um, Mike just looked like he was going to ask him right now to actually run. And when he kind of makes that big, he just makes that big long move with his neck, and he looked like he was doing it so easy when he didn't have to hit him with the whip. It was just great when he was drawing off here. And um, he just looks like he's doing it so easy to me. You've really tried to space out his races, not running him too often. You could have come back in the Whitney about a month after this race. Instead, you waited for the Woodward, another grade one. What is it about that schedule that works for him? With him being so big, we just give him his time to recover when he comes back and just to recover naturally so he stays healthy. So if he can come back to the race in a couple months and be totally on his own, you know, healthy without having to, you know, just have any little issues, it works perfect for him. Talk a little bit about uh, tomorrow's race and how you see it playing out. You're in post three. Trickmeister, who I think most people assume will go to the lead, is just to your outside in post four. How do you want to see that play out? Um, I think there's going to be some speed, and the three post will be super for him. It really doesn't matter if he's on the rail or, or in the middle or to the outside. And um, I think Mike's going to be able to, we're going to let him handle the race and um, wish him good luck and hopefully you know, he puts him where he needs to be. I have a lot of confidence in both of them. Yeah, this is a horse that I know I followed right from the very beginning of his career. He looked over the winter time coming into the Triple Crown last year like he was going to be a, you know, a, a very solid horse. Um, had a little setback after the Triple Crown. Didn't come back until, uh, you know, later on in his, uh, his three-year-old campaign. But you mentioned as a, you know, a physically a large horse. I think it's benefited him. Um, what was the what was the cause of the break, uh, the the layoff for him? We actually just gave him time to grow up. He uh, um, he didn't leave the racetrack ever. Mm -hmm. We spent the, the summer here and the, some of the fall here, and um, he trained every day. And it was just a lot of um, work to get him bigger and stronger, mm -hmm. and just to help him mentally to get through that point and hopefully have a great year this year. And it certainly has paid off. And I know there are not a lot of people who would be willing to give up. 
uh, the entire three-year-old campaign, the glamour campaign for most horses in order to have a nice older horse, but it certainly has paid off uh, in spades in your case. Thank you, definitely. Mr. and Mrs. Reeves have been super um, by letting this colt have his time off, and um, I'm so glad that it paid off for them. They've been great owners and great for the business. I think, uh, I think you're right, and I know a lot of people are very happy to have him back. Is it fair to say, uh, since it, you do space the races for him, that this may be his final appearance on the track before the Breeders' Cup? Um, it could be. We'll see how he comes back after this race and let him tell us where he needs to be. And, uh, you, know, hopefully, you know, hopefully he'll win here tomorrow, and, and, you know, we'll see him back maybe beforehand downstate. But uh, if not, we'll get, I'm sure, the very best performance out of him. Okay. One other question. I, I remember reading, if I'm thinking of the right horse, he's very late foal, too. Is mm. that the great case? He was a June foal, I think? He's a June 15th foal. Wow. That's, wow. About, as, <laughs> that's about as late a foal as you're going to have, And he's coming too. up to 17-3 now. So wow. he's a big, big boy. Yeah, I, saw, I saw him in the paddock the other day, and when he walked in to school uh, during the uh, during the races the other day, I you know I was kind of taken aback by the size of him. Mm -hmm. I hadn't seen him in quite some time, so I was very impressed with how he looks. But that is Thank that's you. a large size for a for a thoroughbred horse. He is, he is, and he uses his body really well. He's very kind on himself when he runs. Yeah, he doesn't appear. He's kind of he's kind of light over the ground. Sometimes a, a big horse will be a little bit heavy and a little hard on himself. He, he is. does. He's keeping himself well and helping uh, make your job easier. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Kathy, would like to thank you for taking the time to come over and, uh, and spend a little time with us thank and tell you. us a little bit about Mucho Mayo.